What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create a sliced wall using the extension Slicer and Curveloft inside of SketchUp. Um, if you're looking for more great SketchUp extensions, make sure to check out my free SketchUp extensions guide at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash extensions. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so you're going to need a couple different extensions in order to make this work. So the first is going to be Curveloft, and then you're also going to need joint push pull as well as slicer from TIG. And I will link to all these extensions in the notes down below. But basically what we want to do is we want to create a sliced wall that um, follows a curved path inside of SketchUp. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rough out my curved wall. And so basically the way this wall is going to work is it's going to go straight for about 30 feet on the bottom and uh, then it's going to come out about 6 feet, something like this. and I want to generate a curve in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a circle um, based on where this comes in, and then I'm going to erase out my extra. That's just a little bit easier than using the. Uh, it's a little bit easier than using the arc tool in order to draw this in here. And then I'm going to take this arc segment and I'm going to add. I'm going to turn this to like 24 segments just to make it look smooth. And honestly, I'm not even a hundred percent sure if that's going to affect the uh, result that we're going to generate. But then I'm going to use the rotate tool in copy mode in order to rotate this out. Because what this wall is going to do on the bottom is, is it's going to come straight, and then it's going to curve 90 degrees, and it's going to curve 90 degrees. And the only other thing I'm going to do, and you can see how I selected this edge and then use the rotate tool in copy mode. So tap the control key to activate copy mode and I rotated this 180 degrees. Then I'm going to scale this down by about half, so 0.5. And so what that's done is that's kind of roughed out the base of my wall. Well now what we want to do is we want to rough out the top of our wall because what our wall is going to do is at the top it's going to follow a different path than it does on the bottom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a line up right here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line all the way across here, um, even though this isn't exactly the shape you want to create. What I'm doing is I'm using this line as a guide in order to kind of rough out where my wall is going to go, and then I'm going to erase out this edge. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the extension Curveloft in order to create a face along this, um, along this object. And I'm going to make a copy of this off to the side just because I'm going to demo something for you in a minute. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to select all of this. And you can see how this creates kind of a closed shape. And within Curveloft, there's an option for skin contours. Well, when we select the option for skin contours, what that's going to do is that's going to come in here and that's going to generate a skin that we can then use in order to create a face right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to slice this whole thing up using the extension slicer. So in order to do that we need to give our wall thickness. Well we can't push pull this face because it's a curved face and SketchUp can't do that. But we can use the extension joint push pull. And if you remember what joint push pull does is joint push pull allows you to thicken surfaces like this one. So I'm just going to select this and we're going to activate joint push pull. And so when we activate joint push pull, we want to click on this little button here with the J on it, the blue option in order to push pull this out. And a couple things about settings really quick um, is you want to make sure that your borders are set to contour and not grid. And then uh, you don't really need to worry about generating as a group. I think everything else should be okay, but make sure this isn't set to grid or else this won't work. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to single click on this and we're just going to thicken this to about 4 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and type in 4 and hit the enter key. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a face in here or a thickened object in here that's what's known as a solid group. And so a solid group is going to be a group that doesn't have any holes in it. It's a manifold solid. And uh, the best way to describe that is if you were to fill it with water, there's no hole for anything to come out of and there's no internal faces. So um, just think about that when you're trying to create solids. Well, your object needs to be a solid in order for the extension slicer to be able to come in here and slice this up. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the extension slicer to slice this wall. And so in order to do that, I'm just going to come in here 
and I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna tell me that I need to save my model. So we're gonna go ahead and save our model and then we're gonna activate Slicer. And so now that this is saved, we can click on this and we can select the option for Slicer. And now we need to come in here and we need to select our axis. And I believe the axis that we wanna slice along here is the Y axis. So we're gonna select the Y axis right here. And it's gonna ask us a few things about how we wanna slice this. So for example, I want my slices to have a thickness of two inches, but I also want them to have a two inch space between them. So I'm gonna set my spacing to four inches. So now my thickness is two, my spacing is four. And uh, you can set your centralization to whatever you want. It doesn't really matter in this case. Um, we're gonna say no to add references and no to flatten. Um, those are more if you're trying to export to a CNC router or something like that. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click okay and we're gonna use slicer and it's gonna come in here and slice up this wall. And so one thing I'm not 100% clear on and I wanted to ask you guys actually um, is we can do this and this will slice this wall up and from afar it looks pretty good, right? If I look at it like straight up and down, the problem is these don't continue kind of straight up and down. What this does is this kind of slices these where the end of the face would be. So maybe and I'm not 100% sure how to fix that, to be honest with you. Maybe it's just early and I should be able to think about it. But um, leave a comment below and let me know what you think the best way would be to have these continue straight up and down. I'm pretty sure it has more to do with the actual thickness of the wall than anything else. But leave a comment below and let me know what you think the best way would be to have this kind of continue straight straight along here like these were actually straight boards instead of cutting this face off because I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, and so the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna add our two by fours along this wall over here as well. And so you may be thinking, well, why didn't we just use curve aloft in order to do that? Well, if you use curve aloft in order to do that like this, and then we were to use slicer on it, it would definitely work, but the problem would be over here, you'd get kind of these weird slices along this edge. You want this to look more like a series of two by fours that have been set straight up and down. And uh, this doesn't really do that, so that's why we can't use slicer to just do the whole thing at once. And so what we would do instead is we would come in here and we're gonna use another extension called path copy. What path copy is gonna do is that's gonna allow us to come in here and generate, copies along this path really easily. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rough out the shape of a two by four. And I realize there's the actual dimensions of a two by four aren't two by four, but for simplicity's sake, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this. And we're gonna make this a component. And so when we make a component for path copy, we need to make sure that we set the axes on the right corner because we want this to place this along a point. So I wanna make sure when I create this co component and we can just call this board or something like that, but you wanna make sure you come in here and set your component axes based on this corner right here. And the reason for that is because that corner or that point is where path copy is gonna place your objects inside of SketchUp. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna extrude this up to we'll say eight feet high, just like this. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to use the extension weld in order to weld these two edges together into an uninterrupted path. So I'm just gonna select both of these and go up to extensions, weld. I will link to that one in the notes down below as well. But then now we have an uninterrupted path and we're just gonna use the extension path copy to create a copy of this object along this path. And so what you're gonna notice is, first of all, I set my axes up wrong. So we're gonna undo this real quick. And I think the green axis needs to point this other direction. So I'm just gonna go to tools, axes, So we'll update that and then we'll run path copy again. There we go. 
So you can see how what that does is that comes through here and that creates copies of this based on whatever spacing I set. So when I first do this, if I was to select this path and activate path copy, you can see how you can set the distance between by typing a value. I'm just gonna type in a value of four inches and hit the enter key. And then I'm just gonna click on this object and you can see how that's gonna space these at four inches. And uh, one thing about these is they are still on the wrong side. So there's a couple different ways you could fix this. Um, in this case, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on one of these components and select it. And then I'm just gonna flip that. So I'm just gonna use the scale tool to flip it to negative one inside that group and then all of those will flip because they're components and they'll be on the correct side of the line and then I can erase out this extra piece and we're pretty much good to go so we might have a little spacing issue in here that you might have to come in here and fix but generally speaking we're gonna be in pretty good shape so something like that all right, and so this needs to also have a curving wall on the other side. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this path. And then I'm just gonna flip it over here. And so what we should be able to do is we should be able to weld these together and uh, get this to just copy along the whole path. Um, I had some problems with this when I was demoing this method earlier or working on this method earlier, but we'll try it anyway. So what I've done is I've taken this curve and I've welded it together and uh, I'm trying to use this uh, single uninterrupted path to copy these objects along, but path copy doesn't seem to like that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna split this up. So I'm just gonna draw a line off of this, which splits these two objects up. And then I'm just gonna select all of these and I'm gonna weld them in, in, into an uninterrupted path. And then we'll just do each one of these individually. So I'm just gonna select this object go up and activate path copy and click on one of these and it's going to drop in my copies along this path and then we'll do the same thing over here we'll select this edge run path copy and then click on this right here and that'll create the copies along the other piece of this path right here so and you need to be a little bit careful when you do it that way you might get a little overlap just based on where the endpoints are um, you can just delete out one of those but you can see how you could create something like this really quickly and really easily using the extension slicer so the other thing you might want to do is just come in here with your materials and just uh, apply a default material to this so these all look the same. So now you've got a pretty good top-down view, front view, all of those different things. So leave a comment below and let me know what your suggestions are for fixing this issue right here. Um, I, I feel like this should be a fairly simple solution and I'm just not getting it right now. So um, leave a comment and let me know what you think about that. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you have any ideas for improving this workflow? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.